Yes. It is I, Henry Zabrowski, here within the void. Oh! Oh! Is this mysterious? It, is, it would be mysterious if the uh, listeners could see you. Oh! <laughs> I'm in the same exact studio where they filmed the moon landing. Oh, yeah, that's it's... right. Yeah, apparently they filmed the moon landing in Atlanta, where Henry Zabrowski is recording from right now. Yeah. yeah Welcome to the last podcast on the left. I'm Marcus Parks here with Ed Larson in Los Angeles, where nothing fake is ever filmed. Oh, oh. My God, except for the boobies. Except for the boobies and some of the butts. It is kind of funny. If you see in the video version, I'm wearing a black shirt, too. So I sort of look like, do you remember Mum and Shantz? <laughs> no, I don't know what mum and shots. Mum and You remember no. it's like from the 1970s where they would do like puppet things on real television where they would do a lot of like, it's like, I just look like, oh, I feel like I'm in Haozu. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're talking about. I didn't know it had a name though. You know, yeah. you don't know mum and shots? Well, I don't no, and fucking you know you anymore. I can't, you can't believe just you. Des- you can't just describe things by going, oh, <laughs> that's, not, that's not evocative. You know? If you knew <laughs> Mum and Shantz, then the, the, if the audience knows Mum and Shantz, then they know what I'm doing. It's just, it's it's disembodied head and hands. It reminds me of Labyrinth, you know, the guys whose heads would go up and down and they started playing basketball with them and shit. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Well, this week we got a true crime roundup for everyone. <laughs> Bang, 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 bang. I know. We have been prepping you guys for doing a huge series, and we are going, we are just about to do two massive series, and we actually just got off a call where we have planned out the next year of gut busting content. Yeah. For you pieces of shit. All right, but right now I'm here, man. I'm working <laughs> on a pile. Yeah, we're not no, pieces, of shit. Fucking pieces of shit. And I'm fucking, that's, I'm that's here. That's Henry speaking. That's, I like you. Yeah. I'm breaking my back on a pilot presentation right now where I have to fake playing soccer. And yeah. Oh, I, how's I'm, that going? I am sore. Yeah. <laughs> and I got hit. I got hit with the ball yesterday. How and many it, times? Once. Yeah, well, that, hit, you're you're a goalie, right? Yeah, yes. you're not even doing you're the hardest. You're supposed to. You're supposed to get hit. Yeah, I got. I asked them after I got hit once to please be careful with me because <laughs> yeah. we're playing against. It's a bunch of actors playing against a real soccer team, and so the guy uncorked on me before we knew, and it just hit me right in the chest. Also, I'm wearing like full body armor underneath <laughs> my goalie uniform, and then another goalie came in, and he wasn't wearing any of that. And I was like, I don't understand because I have like knee guards on. I got hip guards on. I got a chest plate that I'm wearing. I am. (laughs) (laughs) I can't be hurt. Just remember, every time they kick, you say the words, not in the face. Yeah, not in the face. <laughs> not in the face. But it's been a lot of fun. We're having a good time. It's me, Rory Scovel, and Dave Willis, and we're enjoying ourselves. Anyway. That's awesome. That That's sounds wonderful. Um, but hope. you know who's also a little fucking bitch is that Jennifer Crumbly. Yeah. Jennifer Crumbly is, this is one hell of a story. I, I'm not sure if you've uh, been following this one, but mm. there was a school shooting in Michigan uh, in 2021. This kid killed four people and he killed them with a gun, a handgun that had been gifted to him by his parents. Oh, like yes. Dylan Roof. Uh, somewhat, yeah. Uh, and he had, um, of course, been, he did not, he was taken alive. Uh, and he was charged. He, you know, found guilty, life in prison without possibility of parole. But for the first time, they also charged the mother uh, with and the father. Invol- and the father, his the mother has been tried. The father's trial is coming up with involuntary manslaughter because they were the ones who gave the kid the gun, despite seeing many signs that he was mentally unstable. And she has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Good. Uh, this is huge, though, because it's. I understand as a parent of a two willful dogs, it's hard to be held responsible for the actions of a chihuahua, right? Like yeah. Carmi, Carmi's aggressive, but Carmi also at the same time is, is loving. I know her, I know mm-hmm. Carmi and I want the yeah. world to know Carmi. You know what I mean? But if Carmi kept sending me letters from the groomer that said stuff <laughs> like, I think of blood, I dream of death all i want to do is kill 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 first of all kind of cute she's learned to write 
<laughs> Second of all, it's like you would want to do something. And in this case, what we're seeing uh, is this like kind of like the reason why it's unprecedented is because who wants to be held responsible for the actions of others? Because, you know, no one's really technically responsible for anybody else's life. That's not how it fucking works. But like yeah. this, this idea of like, it was so over the line how much Ethan Crumbly was asking them for help. Like other kids, like we've seen other kid school shooters. It seems to a lot of times it's like, yes, there is some planning, but a lot of it is pretty, it's in the moment and it's a hidden thing. It's like, they're, they're not telling people, you know, like Ethan Crumbly, like showed his mom, his journal saying, I want help. He texted her again and again and again, and again saying, I'm seeing demons. I'm seeing visions. I'm seeing the shit. He's telling his teachers, like, I want to kill. And no one is, and they're telling them. But even though Jennifer Crumbly says that she'd never heard from the school. Well, he uh, got caught searching online for bullets at school. He would watch shooting videos in class and he would draw violent images. Like the, the school knew something was up and they were contacting her. Of course yes. they were contacting her. And her saying that uh, her defense of him telling her that like I see demons, blah, blah, blah. They said it was a cute inside joke amongst the family that the house was haunted. Yes. Uh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> uh, how old was he when he did the uh, when he did the deed? He was uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, no. This is the yeah. Lock her up, lock him up, and then start going. And now that they have done this, and she is guilty, they need to go after fucking Dylan Roof's stepdad. Yeah, you know, and start and you. This is the it, this is an actual way to start stopping this shit. Well, yeah, they, to they, really go after the parents who give them the guns. Yeah, but you need a chain of evidence. You need to have the backup to put it through a trial. So the one thing that this case has that no other cases really had up to this point is fucking it's all in writing. And yeah. like you're looking at Jennifer Crumbly, who like the way that prosecution set it up was essentially she was too busy getting railed in order to walk after her son. She described herself as a helicopter parent. But then all of a sudden she's talking about how like she's got to go visit her horses three times a week. The horses got more one-on-one -on -one time yeah. with Jennifer Crumbly than her murderous son. And then she uh, she started she had an affair going on with some other guy who looked like I mean she looks like Elmer Fudd, but this <laughs> other guy looks like a guy that would fuck Elmer oh, Fudd. Yeah. You know, wow. <laughs> these guys are, and, but then she was an adult friend finder, setting up all these like trysts and doing all this. She had a lot of energy for her cooch, but she didn't have a heck of a lot of energy for her son. Man, so she, people are actually on adult friend finder? Oh yeah, I buddy. so. No, it's, well, it I always thought real. that was a scam. Well, I I'm don't sure know. sure half it is. I feel like them saying that there are definitely local MILFs. Yeah. Like, trying to fuck you tonight, like... I People know. get divorced, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like <laughs> that is true. There are, there are definitely horny singles in my area. Technically. Yeah, yeah, I are. just didn't think, I didn't think they would be on adult friend finder. Man, well, that's so crazy. She calls herself a helicopter parent. I always thought the worst helicopter parent was Kobe Bryant. <laughs> but <laughs> I can't believe that you would do that on this fucking show. I can't believe here in Los Angeles, <laughs> How of all here. places in the land of Kobe. <laughs> You would ever say something like that. I'm in Atlanta. My name's Henry Zabrano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. We know it's it's it, it's really fucked because yeah, I mean, at least she wasn't on Child Friend Finder because that's really <laughs> and they should get rid of that app. But the adult friend finder stuff is very like it just shows that she, her her head was not in the game. But it, no. in the end, her her defense attorney was one of the single. Worst attorneys I have ever seen. I watched hours of the trial. She yeah. quoted, ta her first line was quoting Taylor Swift. She oh, then yes. came in Ugh. and she openly would weep. She, she pretended to gag when they showed footage of the shooting. She openly wept on, in trial, which is like, you just, they, they instruct their clients to show no emotion. And yeah, they, that's they why they pump you full of like Xanax and Valium. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's gotta be fun. Mm -hmm. I would definitely be all zannied up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by trial. Yeah, oh. zany, the nanny would be all over yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> I would definitely be circuiting. But I I also feel it's it, it's hard because the, then you look at, you remember the, the, it was the documentary, I believe it was about Adam Lanza's mom. Mm -hmm. Or you have the other side 
where they really don't know what the fuck to do when they got a kid that's like, I hate to use the term born bad. Yeah. But a yeah. kid that's coming out of the coming out of the fucking oven with some misfiring wires. Yeah. Like, and then what do you do then? Like, can you control the everyday, every single day actions of a child? They're still like an adult. They're still an autonomous human being. I mean, you but, can control how many guns you keep in your house. Yes. I think that's the thing. I think that's yeah. a big question. That's well, like, what can we do? It's like, maybe <laughs> make it so a 15 year old can't easily sh shoot a bunch of people with a semi-automatic gun. And didn't Lanza kill his mom? Yeah. He killed her first. Yeah. Now he killed her first and then went out to Sandy Hook. That but should have been enough warning for this bitch. But no, no. She I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call her that. <laughs> You're a camp I'm just but, mad about the situation. Yes. But it's, I think that it was a, it was from the perspective of another woman writing about a kid with these types of emotional issues. But this is a woman that was working her ass off to, trying to help it. Meanwhile, like Ethan Crumbly was begging for help to everyone that would listen to him. And because again, like that sometimes that's what a parent's supposed to do. A parent's supposed to come in and not be your friend in my mind. I don't know.